What is up guys? So before we get into this video, if you guys want to check out my first ever novel, I wish I never knew. The link's down in the description below for the paperback and the hardcover copy. Even if you don't like reading, I think you'll really like it. It's like a screenplay and a novel mixed together. It's really cool. I hope you guys decide to check it out and let's go ahead and get into the video. So last night I watched Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. And when I was a kid, I loved these books. I remember, I don't think, I don't know if it was Barnes and Noble, but I remember it was a bookstore. And I remember my parents took me to it and we got the, um, it was the one that had the the three books in one. It was uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, More Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, and Scary Stories 3, more, even more Tales to Chill Your Bones or something. And I remember reading through those, and I loved them. I really did. The first book is still probably my favorite. Uh, there's a story in there called The Big Toe, and my grandpa used to tell me that story all the time whenever I was a little kid, and I loved hearing it. Um, and everybody, I think, has their own version of the big toe. But for the most part, the one in the book and the one that he told me, they were pretty similar. And, and and I went around and I've and I've told people the story too and stuff. And I and I love I love the big toe. I would love to see a movie made of the big toe. Um, and that's not me having a foot fetish or anything. But when they announced scary stories to tell in the dark, the movie. I, oh, I jumped right on that. And then attaching Gilmoro del Toro, or however you say his name, I always butcher it. Um, I, I thought originally that he was writing and directing it. I thought that it was going to be his next movie, but it turns out it wasn't. And I found out a little bit ago that somebody else was directing it, which I forget who directed it. Um, but, but just the fact that his name was attached to it means that this has to be a really good movie, right? Well, I'm going to go ahead and get into the pros, and I'm going to get in, go ahead and get into the cons, because the movie... When I first heard about it not being an anthology movie, I was like, uh, I don't really know how I feel about this. But then whenever they started talking about it more, I realized why they did it. And the reason why apparently it wasn't an anthology movie was because they didn't want one story to be bad and then people judge the whole movie on that. And I get that. I really do. Uh, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, I loved every story in that movie except for the last one. And I do kind of judge the movie on that last one. And if I was to go through and watch the Ballad of Buster Scruggs again, I, I probably wouldn't want. I probably wouldn't watch the last one. I'd probably watch the uh, the first four. I believe. I think there's five of them all together, five or six. So either way, I would watch the first five, first four, and then I'd probably quit watching the movie altogether. So I understand what they were going for. But the more that I sat in the theater and watched this, I, I, I think it would have worked a little bit better as an anthology but they could have executed a little bit better. So scary, so scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is about a group of kids. It's set in 1968. I love how that, well, I'll get into that into the prose. Um, but this girl finds this book and it's written in blood and pretty much the stories write themselves on the page and then they happen to the people in the town. Um, it's, a, it's a perfect Halloween movie. But I think personally what I really would have loved to have seen would, would have been the girl because she because in the movie this isn't a spoiler but she's a writer and I would have loved to have seen her just you know sit in her room with an empty book and then she starts writing these stories and then it starts happening to people in the town but the way the story ended up being I think that would have worked a whole lot better it would have been really similar to what they were were going for and it wouldn't have necessarily been an anthology movie but I still think that it could have worked out. I, I really do. Um, but the thing, the pros, the things that I liked about this movie was one, the backdrop, the date, the setting. Um, 1968, Vietnam War, Richard Nixon. I feel like they threw it in your face a lot. And I think the reason why they did was because there's something that happens in the movie, which I'm not going to say. Um, but, but there's something that happens. There's something you find out. And I feel like the backdrop was needed. I feel like it was a really, really, really interesting backdrop. But I felt like they threw it in your face too much. But still, I do appreciate what they were going for. And they didn't just set it in modern day times and stuff. And then like had cell phones. Because they could have done a lot with cell phones in this. And I really do appreciate that they didn't do that. Another thing I really enjoyed about the movie was the atmosphere. The atmosphere was just straight up. Mwah. Like it was really good. Uh, it, it, it was like, it kind of reminded me of Trick or Treat, the atmosphere, because it feels like a really good Halloween movie. I don't even know why they didn't release this in October. Um, but, but they, they executed it so well with, you know, the trees and the fall leaves or whatever. Um, the, the drive-in theater, uh, showing Night of the Living Dead. Uh, it, it just, they, they done a really good job. They, they completely nailed the atmosphere. Another thing that I really, really, really liked was the, the monsters in this movie. And my favorite particularly being the Pale Lady. 
she was just straight up just, oof. And, and I don't get freaked out by a lot of stuff in movies anymore. But that whole section of the movie was just, I would not want that to happen to me whatsoever. I would not want that to happen to me at all. That really sucks. But they done a really good job. And, and I think, I don't know, I'm pretty sure that most of the monsters in this was CGI. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I, I, I think. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but most of the monsters in this, they, they still, they looked really good. Um, the big toe, uh, Harold. I'm not going to spoil everything that went on in this movie, but, but just know that the monsters looked really good. And now I'm going to get into the stuff that I did not like about the movie. First off, there is this character in this movie, and he's like a big bully. Like He's not a big bully at all, but he's like this bully and I, I don't understand why these kids were threatened. Like, there, there was a scene in the movie where he comes up to this dude's car and puts a baseball bat inside of the car. And honestly, I would have got out of the car and took that baseball bat and shoved it up. His, like, like he was not threatening whatsoever. They, they could have at least got somebody that was, like, bigger, you know, to, to be this bully. And also, he was a drunk. Like, I mean, I, I, I don't understand. Like, literally, he was just... I did not like his character, not because he was... was can't cuss on YouTube. Not because he was a butthole, but because he was just, I just felt like his character had no placing in the movie whatsoever. Like, I just literally just, you could have thrown him out of the movie and it would have, like, the actor himself, not hating on the actor himself, it was just the way the character was. Like, it just, I don't know. Another thing is the stories themselves. Now, I've heard, I've heard that the movie is all three books combined into one movie, and they just take different stories from each book. And if that was the case, then they just took like five stories from the first book, and people are saying it's all three books. It is not all three books. Do not let that get twisted in your head. Like, I went into this movie assuming it was going to be all three books because I figured they would just try to make it all just one big movie, and they were just going to take the best stories from each book. It is one book. It is one book. As far as I can tell, it is the first book. It's been a while since I've read it, but I'm pretty sure it is just the first book. Now, there's a lot of nods from, like, you know, the Hearst song, and there's a bunch of other nods to other stories, but, well, not a bunch, but, but there's nods to other stuff. But they only picked out, like, five stories. Like I said, it would have went better as, like, sort of a very, 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 very soft anthology movie. But instead, they went this direction with it. I understand, but at the same time, I just, I mean, scary stories to tell in the dark. If you would have showed me this movie and I would have watched it, I would have been like, and you didn't tell me the title of the film, then I would have been like, oh, okay, this 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 reminds me of scary. That it would have been a reminder. It wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been watching it and been like, oh yeah, this is scary stories to tell in the dark. No, I would have just been reminded. The ending. The ending itself wasn't necessarily too bad. They are going to make another one, I'm pretty sure. More scary stories to tell in the dark. Um, I feel like this movie will benefit. I think it'll benefit from a sequel. It's one of those rare instances where I feel like the movie will benefit from a sequel. Um, because they... It's going back to it, this whole anthology thing where they're not doing that. And I feel like, honestly, I'm not going to get into any spoilers, but I feel like that the sequel has a chance to be better, a lot better than, than the original movie. So that's what I thought of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. The movie itself is not bad. It's not a bad film. It, it's, either, it's either up here most of the time or it's right down here. It, there's really no middle ground with this movie. Um, which really does suck. Um, and I think I rate my movies F horrible, D for bad, C for okay or meh, depending on how I'm feeling, B for good, A for amazing, and S for superior or masterpiece. I'm going to give this movie a C uh, for okay. It's not a meh movie. Like, if you say scary stories to tell in the dark, I'm not going to be like, eh, you know. I'm, I'm going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, that was an okay movie. Because it is. It is an okay movie. And if you're, and I'm not going to get into this whole, like, I, I didn't bring it up in the review. I shouldn't even be bringing it up now. Um, but I'm not going to get into this whole, don't bring your kids to the theater if they're too young because it's still a horror movie. 
I don't get scared from scary movies anymore. It sucks. It's very rare that I get scared from a scary movie. What I'm going to say is that this is a PG-13 movie. It really is. And it pushes the boundaries of what PG-13 can do. Um, but it's the same as sort of Insidious. I know they dropped an F-bomb in Insidious. They didn't drop an F-bomb in this. But uh, if you take your kid to go see this movie and you're afraid that he's going to leave the movie to just a completely different person, don't expect that. He might need to sleep with the light on for a few days. But that's it. So I'm not even going to get into that mess. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you guys did, leave a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And you guys can follow me on my social media. The links are down in the description below. Uh, you can follow me on my Instagram. That's, you know... Um, where I post all my movie stuff, game stuff, and all that. Uh, but anyway, guys, let me know what you guys thought of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time.